Welcome to the Pat Cave Podcast. My name is Pat Clark, and I'm with my best friend, Booty, Mr. New Booty. How you doing, bud? I'm doing great, man. I learned a lot, and I learned very little at the same time. So we watched uh, a movie from my childhood Yeah, that was a roller coaster of emotions. Oh, I know. <laughs> It was. It was incredible. Well, incredible in a couple of ways. Okay. We're talking yeah. about Warriors of Virtue from 1997, I'm pretty sure. 97. 97, yes. Felt earlier. Yeah. It kind of had that nostalgic um, kinda, budget. Like w- Willow <laughs> by maybe like Never Ending Story. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It definitely had um, there's that Frank Oz and like uh, uh, who's the guy who did Sesame Street? I'm. Look. Yeah, like a lot of there's definitely some puppets. That, definitely some puppet work. Definitely. We'll talk about that soon. And weird, just weird. It's very strange. Yeah. So this uh, was a. I guess I liked it as a kid, and my mom bought me like all the toys. Yeah, can you go like just from memory what some of that like those toys yeah. were? Was it strictly action? So figures? I think I was in my kung fu era as a kid. I you know, know. <laughs> loved the Jackie Chan movies. So anything kung fu, of course, I probably saw this trailer and went nuts as a kid <laughs> so my mom and dad we took you know they took me to it and uh you know my dad and mom always liked collect- the california years yeah so they liked yeah and we liked collecting characters you know all together we got the toys and so i got every one of these things i think this might be classic case of we're only going to show this movie on the west and east coast and i don't think that i had this as like an advertisement ever you know what this might have slid under the radar yeah for, for i mean it Okay, Warriors of Virtue, first of all, I don't even think we've told them. They're kung fu kangaroos. Yeah, right. Well, no, if you listen to our first episode, we did give you a hint. One day, one ordinary kid will be transported to an extraordinary world beyond the boundaries of imagination. Cool. In this new world, welcome to the other side. You're really a newcomer? Ruled by fear. I want him alive! Go! Houston, we have a problem. He is the last hope to bring together five legendary warriors. How's it going? He is often a bit cranky. Who use the forces of nature as their weapons. Wood. Fire. Earth. Metal. And water. Now, the battle against the ultimate evil. The answer lies with you. Is about to begin. Come out and you are invited to enter a remarkable world. Yes! Rockable! Where nature is your weapon, but you are the ultimate warrior. Warriors of Virtue. It's it's just wild. Looking back on some things I remember, some things I don't. I haven't seen this since I was a kid. You yeah. know, in 97, I was... Five. What, five? Yeah, right? Pushing five. So I, we laughed a lot. Yeah, I did. And for And not just like... Guys, like walking into this, I don't want to like just. It's not just fully a roast because there were some things that I did love. Yes, I for me it wasn't nostalgia, but it, I, if there's a, any element of nostalgia laced in this, it's that like, oh yeah, this type of movie. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> so it looked uh, some of the positives. Let's talk about some of the yeah, positives. The set. This. I mean, it, so the budget. Yeah. Well, the per the budget, budget was. You look? 35 million yeah and okay. how much did it make well it actually actually cost 56 million to make so they definitely went over budget yeah and the uh, box office i know it. you, you do know it. the box office yeah. let's hear it they made six million five hundred and twenty four thousand six hundred and twenty macanudos no six, yeah six. they they were in the whole you said 50 million 56 million <laughs> they were in the whole 50 million for this kangaroo movie well and all, well you got to think about you got to think about all the marketing for it too yes so and, and i also just want our audience to have a small comparison of another beloved kangaroo movie um kangaroo jack and oh I just, gosh i just want to compare booty loves that movie i do because uh michael shannon is in that movie underrated bad guy actor okay. and so is uh 
Jerry O'Connell uh, from Stand By Me. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just amazing. Well, um, these things kind of look like horses mixed with kangaroos a little bit. Oh, you I'm, know? I'm way meaner, and I said jackass or goat. These oh really do yeah <laughs> it's kind of well, okay let's the puppeteering in these things are incredible right yeah like the little like okay I it, when I say incredible I mean like the way the, these guys can fight in these suits holy shit what <laughs> I'll wait we'll get to it what let's hear it <laughs> you can't you can't, <laughs> can't just stop like that <sighs> okay Kangaroo Jack did sixty million budget. They at least made twenty eight point nine million. So they, their box office uh, final tally was eighty eight million, eighty eight point nine million. Okay, kick ass kangaroo movie, guys. Okay, just well, so, just so that we have comparison. Okay, so let's get back on track. So these puppets slash, you know, stunt men did a great job. There's some of the positives I'd say was like their kung fu scene. The first one when they introduce. All of the kung- kangaroos. It's like, yeah, and they call them the ruse. Yes, in the movie, the ruse. Yeah. Like it's it's really, really well shot. Okay, mm-hmm. I loved the lighting. Some of this, like you know, back then everything was on film, so it kind of looked like that, like high budget nostalgia type stuff. Yeah, and, but with and, like, and then it went downhill <laughs> so fast. Oh yeah, like I mean, the first comment we made in the film, guys, was ADP. Oh, the ADRing. <laughs> the ADR. Yes, the ADRing. There was so fascinatingly I, terrible. It was. And uh, okay, how about we just like go through the plot and like go yeah. through our notes and we just kind of laugh at some of the notes we took. I almost started reading the plot to Kangaroo Jack. Okay. To get off the Kangaroo so, Jack. I will. I'm I'm officially off. Um so so Ryan is this kid that uh he has a disability, you yeah, guys. His his his, his he, leg is he has a brace. Right. And so he is just so dogged on the fact that he can't really try out for any sports because I guess in nineteen ninety seven the Special Olympics isn't taking any Come on. All right, moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um uh he's water boy of his school's football team and like he calls a play for this football team, it doesn't go his way, and he's mad. And before that he was at a Chinese restaurant with his buddy Ming and Ming there's a whole food montage. so yes I'm, it's it, it's kind of weird let's talk about Ming yeah because Ming and his relationship he's kind of like his mentor or something yeah. I don't know like does he live above the building or like yeah I don't no, even know if it's clear how he got there was his mom just getting takeout and he was like I'm gonna go see in the back what's going on well he's this is a uh he cl- clearly owns Ming's restaurant and this guy does a straight up kung fu you know oh ming owns the restaurant yes not ryan i think it's yeah the little Thank kid <laughs> yeah because yeah. his mom's a realtor yeah and he so he lives in this bougie bougie neighborhood <laughs> yeah. and he goes down and kicks it with ming <laughs> and you guys like i think for that moment which, which this is the beginning of the film the yes. very beginning of the yes. film and i wrote something about shrimp i wrote slow-mo shrimp montage <laughs> and because guys like hey slow mo shrimp montage yes yeah, what a band name shrimp montage what another band name um so, th- so he's cooking he's doing kung fu cooking yes ryan's looking at him like jaw dropped yeah and his other people working with him are like god this guy again you guys it's not just cooking it's well, like kung- could you imagine working with that guy yeah, I can. <laughs> You're trying to get something, all of a sudden you get a left hook. I can't imagine working with someone like that who's not on meth. Okay, okay. <laughs> like, well, that makes sense. Well, yeah. anyway, he does his montage, gives yeah. Ryan a couple of... Oh, and he's on the toilet reading that comic book that's inspiring. Okay. His dog delivers him a piece of toast. We jumped a little bit. We did. Yes. But You'll so see. Ming and, Ming and this kid's rest, this relationship, Right. they've never really explained it. No, not at all. And they're just pals. Yeah, this is a 46-year-old man. It was unclear to me. I thought he was like a waiter at first. He runs that restaurant. Yeah. It is Ming's rest. It's Ming's. Yeah. But his yeah. mom got it's Min's and she got Min's. It wrong. Mom Min's. got mom got roasted. Yeah, she's a racist, guys. No, I didn't recognize a single actor from this so, movie. So I did and I'll try to look up his name and we can put it in the links, but the um uh, the guy from Scrubs who is the radiologist that goes my machine, my machine. He was one of the <laughs> the minions. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and then that's it. That's all I okay. gathered from cast, except that I said something about yeah. Komodo looks like an angry My Chemical Romance well, the, fan. Well, <laughs> it's not a phase, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not a phase, Ming. So let's talk about Ryan. Like you said, he p- called the game-winning call. 
Yeah, he made for the, the game, football team. He, yeah, so that this is Ryan's problem, you guys. He made the game winning call, and the bully of the film. I can't, don't remember. Well, he's the quarterback. Yeah, the bully's the quarterback, and yeah. he does listen to Ryan call this play. He's with his friend Chucky. Yep, Chucky and had some great one liners. This Chucky yes, up Chuck is yeah. his nickname. The bully. The bully comes across on his badass mountain bike. Yeah, and I wrote a note about the bull. Oh, yeah, the mountain bike. Yes. That's not what a mountain bike sounds like, you guys. Well, the sound effects for these mountain bikes, the slides, and sound everything. effects all over this movie were crazy and extensive, very cartoonish kind of stuff. So, anyway, we, I wrote we, that the bully is secretly uh, the, in, the, in love with Ryan. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, but I love that even more because I wrote that he's secretly Chris O'Donnell, who's Robin in Batman Forever. <laughs> he had the two earrings, he had the two earrings, <laughs> yes. and like the, the shaved head. Yes. So that guy bullies Ryan into basically coming with them the night of to a second location. He bullies him into <laughs> going to a second location with him. Don't do that, kids. Oh, my and God. so they go, and there's a big whirlpool, uh, yeah, with a pipe across it. The antagonist of the plot is a vortex of water, water. that's secretly yes. in a pipeline. Yes, so the bully walks across, spray paints his name, yeah, where the evil. Sharon wrote her name with a heart on the other side. She, they, they, it's funny because they cut to a wall with like, <laughs> and, and then the music was like, John, John, John graffiti. Yeah. And there was like, Toby, Karen to- with yeah. a heart. <laughs> I know a Toby. He would definitely cross that pipe. Yeah. So anyway, this he's bullied into crossing. Yeah. Right. Well, so the bully does it first just to show that it's possible. Successful. For you doubters. Successful. Successful. And then Ryan is forced to do it. With Chucky just encouraging him with that awesome no. Tom Cruise no, line. No, Ch- Chuck doesn't want him to do it. He well, said, he's encouraging let's... once he's on it. No, he said, let's make like Tom and Cruise. <laughs> yeah, say it again. <laughs> what did you say? Let's make like Tom and Cruise. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, man, I wanted to be in that writing room. So guys. he falls in, right? Gets yeah. transported to the land of Tao. Yeah. Okay. And that's also, so we already had seen the book of Tao that Ming gave him? Yeah, yeah, that's how the connect. I guess Ming was, uh, maybe this was Ming was a former student Do you of. Think Ming was Chung the whole time. We'll get to that. I have theories. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. But okay, so he goes to this magical land of Tao. Wakes up. Leg brace is gone. Yeah, and he's like in a world that you can do kung fu, and he's like, "No, I'm going to dodge this invisible running back." Yeah, well, like he, he first f- celebrates and starts doing a touchdown response, montage. Response. Yeah, yeah, touchdown. He's running like a court, yeah. just being a kid. But also, what's the moral here, kids? Give in to peer pressure. <laughs> and you get your legs back. <laughs> <laughs> you get cured of any illness you have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my so God. So he ends up running into the kung fu kangaroos. Yeah. Also, nah, we'll get there. Well, we'll there's so much exposition. Like every, I feel like everything that was written was just, you know, and you have the MacGuffin. I mean, the Book of Tao. <laughs> yeah. You have the manuscript. That's what they called it. Can you rewind and tell what's a MacGuffin, Patrick? Well, it's something like in a movie where everything needs, it could a be key. replaced by anything. Yeah, a key, a stone, a book. A necklace uh, with a weird looking yes, gem on it. it could be it. anything. It just drives the plot and yeah. it's something everyone's trying to get. Yeah, in Star Wars they overuse the MacGuffin and it's really convoluted. I mean, a lot of people do, but it just you can disguise it with, you know, better writing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So like everything they said were like a cat poster on their their cave wall that you know it's like you know virtue is the sense of ability of oh yeah what was their may the force be with you line like may the virtue virtue be yours well he tries to learn the five virtues right yeah and Which, I got him right here water nope we got that they did it they did an avatar thing didn't they yeah they did and they I got came, it it's fire yeah metal wood water earth yeah and the five virtues are Benevolence, righteousness, order, wisdom, and loyalty. I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> so <laughs> there was so much of that because this was, I think, based on like in, um, like, what was it? I, I looked it up and it was based on something like a book of some sort or a movie from. If you say The Art of War by. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where they pulled that. But that's why it was even funnier for the reveal, and we'll talk about the reveal later. Like, the 
the reading the toe toa the toes the towel the towel the towel oh my gosh so so plot wise guys we have now gotten out of the real world into the world of tau and we take a magical journey to what i believe is the set from the ewok village in return of the jedi gave me those vibes yeah yeah, yeah. definitely we got the 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 rickety bridges we got the random like creature puppets yeah they use that they use that forest a lot oh yeah (laughs) we were in that forest a lot i'm sure it's in like labyrinth or like maybe not labyrinth but there's another one well, that wasn't a real forest, Booty. No, it okay, was good. rubber. Yeah, <laughs> okay, like good. Like that yeah. turd boat they yeah, were exactly. on <laughs> with, the, with, the, with the spinner spoke yeah. as the You know, so compass. when we meet the kangaroos, they all are, you know, dressed in fire, wood, mm-hmm. uh, metal. The metal guy can't talk. No. And I have a theory. <laughs> okay. I think that puppet broke <laughs> before they started <laughs> filming. <laughs> and he just does sign language now. That is so great. <laughs> But if they're using ADP or ADR, ADR yes. why would that matter? They could still make No, it but they still had to move the lips and the eyebrows and the ears oh. for the puppet. That's why it was kind of crazy. This puppet had like, you know, these actors were moving. I think someone from a remote had to have been moving the face. Uh huh. You know, so. Most definitely. They didn't say much because of that, you know. Oh, I also like. Who was the stupid football coach? Because he made a line. I know I'm just backtracking, but the football coach made a line that was like, I played a few games in my day. Gotta be a former NFL player. Sure. Or college athlete. He, he tore his ACL? Yeah. OJ was busy. <laughs> okay. So let's see. I got here. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, comes what next. realm is this? So tell me the vibe of this, this land. So we got like forest creatures slash medieval slash like space alien vibes yeah well and then the the source there's sorcery like there's definitely some sort of magic that isn't fully explained but it also is just like they're using energy yeah the powers weren't really explained that well Uh -uh. like every once in a while you'd see someone blast fire or wind out of their kangaroo tail or something like that or a fart yeah yeah there was a there was a farting scene yeah and so fun. one of the kangaroos is not with the other four because he killed someone. Oh, yeah. And so this guy is torn up about it. Ryan, the newcomer, our boy Rye. Our boy Rye. Goes up and goes, you should join us again. He goes, no, you wouldn't understand. Yeah, and then he turns into like a, a camp counselor and starts yelling like, "Well, yeah. where's your integrity? Yeah. Where's your- <laughs> and then he says the word that gets him, you wimp. Yeah. And then he jumps down and goes, let's go. Yeah. This <laughs> I was kangaroo. like, this guy's got no integrity. Yeah. He's got a very big sense of. <laughs> so Ryan talks him in. They're all together. They go to fight this guy. Let's oh, talk about this bad guy, though. Yeah. Because, like, so we were briefly talking about, like, the setting and stuff. Yeah. Because, like, if this movie's going to get any high grade, it's got to be in set and, like, yeah, the, the production the value. Usage, the production value. You could is... clearly see why they went over budget. Yes, and yeah. then um, uh, with and, that be, and you can clearly see where they ran out of budget. Oh yeah, <laughs> the ending. Yeah, I almost want to like think like did some disaster on set where the mics were there for like recording these actors like happen and then they had to do ADR uh, last minute. I don't know. Definitely feel like they pieced it together. Yeah. Oh man, I forgot what I was gonna say, but we'll get there, you guys. So we'll definitely let's get there. let's move on to this bad guy. So this guy was very dramatic, over the top, theatrical. Yeah. And I think that is because his whole thing was drinking, he was milking the Oh yeah, earth. I wrote it down. It was he, called um He was milking the earth for some kind of goo to make him younger. Zubrium. <laughs> Adrenochrome. Uh-huh. And <laughs> we'll cut that. We'll cut that. And Zubrium. That's what he calls it. Yeah. And I think that's why he's that crazy. Right? So there's a little bit of that explanation. It keeps him young and he's going mm-hmm. crazy and because some of the things um, he said was just... Yeah, I, it was like whoever was in the writing team was like, be as ambiguous and unclear as you possibly can. Uh, just a touch of order! <laughs> and let it simmer in righteousness. Huh? Huh? That was and the just, notes. Yeah, go, go nuts, basically. Yeah, And I, he did go nuts. I would wager there was some improv. That, oh, for sure. Yeah, I would say he he took it from like a thousand percent energy. You know, when we really needed like probably four hundred percent. Yeah, he cranked it. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean he he was the one I laughed most at. So mm-hmm. this guy is running out of 
milk from the earth. Yeah. So he wants to get to our world. And you know, still unclear. Still yeah, unclear. Yeah, and he needs the book of he Tao. Needs the book of Tao. Why though? Because that's the all no. the all knowing book, I guess. And for it, what? What to get to get to the to get to our world, Earth. Yeah, and they didn't make that clear. And until he thinks he's gonna late. live in Earth and be and immortal. And I yeah, run it. I like, mean immortal. Ooh, whatever, right? We still are unclear on his end. The game. book is blank and he needs Ryan mm-hmm, to read it. To read it. So we didn't know the book was blank. Pa- well we kind of, Pat kinda of did maybe. Well, but, it's just kind of it was some obvious things went down in this book. Yeah, I mean in this movie. Oh, so, man, <laughs> this movie. So this this girl is on Ryan's side, betrays him. Oh yeah, Elysia. Right, Elysia. Elysia. Yeah. They Elysia. said it, they said it two different pronunciations. Yeah. So which was kind of obvious from the beginning. We're like mm-hmm. we we need a bad guy, but she switched from zero to a hundred real quick. Yeah, and it was hot. Well, yes, but like, so she's get she gets not captured. She goes back and she's crying. Remember? Yeah. And she's like, maybe sad. She's doing it. Takes a sip of the the earth, the, the, the world milk. Yeah, yeah Zubrium. <laughs> and then all of a sudden is cuckoo. So I'm gu- that's my explanation. She was cuckoo as he popped the cap. It was like she could sense. Yeah. It. So I'm guessing she's just a drug addict, right? So yeah. that's why why she was doing that. Let's yeah, talk yeah. about the the maybe the kangaroos. Oh yeah, so I I kind of wrote down their names. So we've got Chi. Yeah. So he's the fire okay. wielder. Yeah. We've got Chung. Wait, the, is the the fire wielder with the the big lighter in his thumb? Yes. And I <laughs> wrote down. Oh man, what did I write down about that? That was oh, so please. funny. He's in a dark so... area, and they're like, Chi, can we get a light? <laughs> Sparks a thumb yeah. lighter. Where the hell was that? Chi hand lighter Zippo would be so tight. <laughs> His thumb comes off like the cap. Yeah. And there's like a cool sound effect. It sounds like a blowtorch, but sure. it's like it's definitely a big lighter behind yeah. a thumb. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was cringy. Okay, go on. Who else we got? Um we got Chi. We've got uh Lai, I believe. No, I'm just gonna look it up. I don't want to be wrong on this. this well, anyway, so... we their names don't really matter that much. No, but like we should talk but about. But we got, like, you know, ones. earth, wood, fire, yeah. metal, water. Th- I think was this around like the Ninja Turtle area w- w- era with the puppets and the what else like Power Rangers is more the vibe. It definitely I got. had Power Rangers. And when you're in a pup like when these actors, I mm-hmm. guess, are in the suits, you know, you have to make your your mo- your motions like over exaggerated. Oh yeah. Right? So it kind of was so corny and childish when they were like talking to each other and kinda huh? Huh? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. And then perfect, just to like reiterate guys, so Lie was the warrior of wood, and he had a stick of wood. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> then Chi was the warrior of fire, and he's a guy we talked about with a Zippo for a hand. Okay. And we got the uh, – Soon <laughs> was the warrior of earth. And Soon had really – she – warrior of earth, the only time we ever saw anything with the earth was like – Flowers. Her tail would – Flowers would – Flowers. Earth. And, <laughs> and her tail would hit the ground, and we would see the mud travel – Gosh, and then last, they yeah. they just dumped so much information. Yeah, and there wasn't even this. like clear mastery of said element. Like, like <laughs> Yi is just wearing metal. Yeah, like, well, he's unclear. got a, a big ring. Yeah, a real oh, Z- yeah. Xenon Let's ring. Let's talk about the ring. A real Z- Xena warrior princess ring, yeah. right? Oh, I, I loved mean, that ring. I did too. As I, a kid, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I had the toy of this metal guy. I definitely, if I'm ever in a situation where I'm about to be in a blender, I would love to have this ring. Yeah, you throw it down right at the it blade. Bounces. Oh, hopefully, you can get it the second time, and you throw it again. <laughs> yeah, and it if saves, that's even needed. And it saves their life. And in this movie, yeah, it was definitely needed. There were some of those kid, quirky, like cheesy things they had to get in there, I feel like. Like, for instance, you know, he throws the metal thing against the metal blades and it's it, the sound effect was like boing yeah oh i mean there was <laughs> boings after like a kick <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly like guy would be flailing through the air and it's like yeah <laughs> it's like like who uh, the guy from like police academy should have been doing yeah the sound oh i this. bet they got him yeah jesus christ um and th- so in the plot like we've met these kangaroos the bad guy has had the book of tau the whole time 
that was so weird how Ryan just didn't know about his backpack being gone. But then he was trying to like blackball Chung into showing him the Warriors. Well, I think I think the kid just didn't. I think that might be bad directing because yeah. he knew his he knew his backpack was gone. Yeah, because I mean, look he's at in that the, boat. Chung is looking at a kid that just came out of the water and he's got nothing on him. He and he's took, and he's where does he think he's keeping this manuscript on him? Like yeah. in his in his locker? Like kid can barely spell manuscript and he s- doesn't have a backpack. Yeah, so anyway, so like the plot really doesn't matter because uh because they didn't think it mattered either because there were some weird ass things going on. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the ending, okay? Yeah, so what what do you, how do you think it ended? <laughs> okay. I have some thoughts. So backtracking to like the the we just talked about it, the tau the the legend the manuscript ryan gets the book finally yeah and when he is finally able to read which is after the oh, wait he's he's over, sitting over kung's funeral i mean they had a yeah. funeral kung who is Mas- the, master kung he's the human that leads the kangaroos yes. he has perished in battle with yes. the bad guy komodo yeah. and ryan is suddenly able to read and what he finds is the same symbol from the Tau cover, also on this turd boat that he rode with <laughs> Elysia. And around it is just all of the elements, metal, yeah. water. And it says, Kung, uh, five is the power of, is one Kung. Five equals one Kung. So Kung is like bad energy, energy. in this movie, I think, right? So he's got I negative Kung. Energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the bad guy had negative Kung. Yeah. Right? So I think what Ryan found out, the reason he couldn't read it because we needed another like He's reason. Not in the advanced because class. if he could read it, the movie would be over quicker. Yeah. And so he was like, you know, you hear out of Kung's funeral, uh, like his coffin or whatever he was in, flowers. Yeah. Look within yourself, Ryan. Yeah. Right. And then what happens? It the words appear, and he but he didn't look inside himself. Like no. you know, Kung tells him to look inside himself. And then he looks up and like stares, and then the words appear. And I was like, "What did he? What, what did he? He didn't accept himself for his own like yeah. his leg or anything, or like I didn't see anything like a, of a revolution for the words to pop up." Worst fortune cookie ever. Yes. So then he runs to the kangaroos. Like I gotta tell them, mm-hmm. you know? No, they're all aren't they? Oh yeah, he does. Have he to does, run to and he goes, "It's." Five to five Kong equals no. What does he say? One one equals five. Dude, five. It was so confusing. The power of five equals one Kong. But but no also he he did realize that the more the bad guy kills, yeah, the weaker he gets. And we okay. right. So his negative Kong gets bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Watch my Kong yeah. get bigger. It's much worse for this Komodo guy. Um, also, what was so unclear, and it's on the same subject, the sword like that the bad guy uses has like this mystical power where the sword chop becomes like gigantic in size, takes out a tower of stone. That's it. And and the, he is hurt. Yeah. No reason for being hurt, but only because he hurt Chung. Like so, Chung has yes. a slash on his forehead. Yes. And then, you guys, five is the power of Kung. Yeah, they all put their stones up. I wrote up. it down. They all put their stones up. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I realized they all had really cool medallions, medallions the moment they pulled out those yes. medallions yes. at the end of the film. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Ryan looks at the book and comes up and goes, he's losing his power. Yeah. The next scene, <laughs> the bad guy duplicates into five bad guys that all can fly with fireworks yeah. coming out of their hands and we looked at each other we looked at each other and went he's losing his power huh yeah he's... <laughs> that guy just doubled and tripled his power yeah so it's very confusing on that that end right uh-huh because it's like oh my gosh i found out he's losing his power nah ryan nah good luck my guy Ugh. so the where we're at in the plot you guys these kangaroos pull up their medallions like the Wonder Twins, activate, show them up to the sky. They disappear into like An some... An energy orb. I, I wrote down cosmic butthole. <laughs> 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 and they shoot out all the elements mixed in one, it looked like. Yeah. 
and one Kong. It, one Kong. Just one Kong. <laughs> and took out Komodo. Yeah, no Fu, all Kong. It's Komodo's the bad guy. Yes. What some of these names, it's like the most generic like um what's movies today are what's lacking the first cool uh, names. Japanese word you know? Komodo. That's the bad guy. Meet <laughs> nice <laughs> Honda Accord. No, no. The cream of some young guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so anyway, they take out Komodo. Yeah. Right? Well, and they take him out with a sword fight also. He dies like three times, yeah. right? Sword fight while the Kung thing happens. Disappears, yeah. And then he pops back up, and uh-huh. they have to do the, the cosmic butthole. Yes. Okay? They take him out, and then all of a sudden, he comes around the corner as just like a peasant, like... Like his, and all the bad guys, all of his minions and bad guys show up, and well, they're like, hey, now you can be our friend. Yeah, because they all hated him. They didn't yeah. want to fight, right? Yeah. They could have just killed him at any time, I think. But it didn't even matter because they were all under a spell. He, he, all of his negative Kung is gone, I think. Oh, no. I thought the Zubrium wore off. No. Well, so that, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. Right? He takes the last little bit of Zubrium from the world. So it goes to the last fights in like a gray wasteland. Sure. Their planet is dying, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like when his negative Kung goes away and he comes around the corner like, what happened? Yeah. Like some drunk guy. I'm just like, really confused. Like, it didn't really happen. I was drunk. Yeah. Why do I look like Van Morrison? Yeah. He comes around the corner and then, you know, the world comes back to life right like all of a sudden it's it's bright and the zubrium's back in the earth yeah literally guys it turned just yellow like and not even a bright yellow like the color of urine and we have the classic like everyone cheers yeah and the music's just pumping again adr people are jazzed yeah and all of his bad guy minions are all like woohoo yeah we're like we're so sick of that guy yeah so the background characters was great too this is one of those movies you could just rewind and watch individual people in the background Mm -hmm. it's like the director was like give me everything you got at all times yeah like you know you've been in plays when like people go a little extra as an extra yeah and i think the rule is always don't regret not going hard enough so that they can tell you to tone it down these guys cranked it to 11 at all times. Well, and you look at two people talking to each other. They're both talking. No one's listening. No, <laughs> they're not all, at all. They're all y- y- hitting their heads up and down and pointing. And yeah. It's like, this is my moment. And this movie's going to go <laughs> huge. <Yeah>. Gangbusters. <laughs> I'm going to be in Jurassic Park 2 and a yeah. half. Oh, speaking of that. What? Oh. This had a sequel. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? No, no. We're watching it. Yeah. Not tonight. No. And I have not seen it, but um, it was a... I have to know more about Kong. It was a kangaroo-filled nightmare. That's and, the subtitle, right? Yes. It may be, is that our episode title? <laughs> kangaroo-filled nightmare. So I, Also, co- can we talk about, was the bad guy's end game to eat those kangaroos? Oh, for sure. He oh, yeah. To, he was going to feed them to Ryan, he said? Nummy, 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 nummy. <laughs> See... I knew, you didn't, I knew you didn't know how this movie it's ended. Round. <laughs> Warriors! Come out and play! <laughs> uh. So, to wrap up just the plot part, so that we can kind of get into some other things that we noticed, just like funny things yeah. we wrote down. Yeah, kangaroos defeat the bad guy. Uh-huh. And uh, Ryan is warped back to the moment he is crossing the pipe line yes with graffiti bottle in hand which Br- g- bottle graffiti canister spray in can his hand. in his yeah. hand which brings me to my next point this movie was all along just about how graffiti is wrong it's definitely wrong yeah so he throws it into the, the vortex. vortex so that graffiti can is now in the land of tau littering is also <laughs> wrong <laughs> wrong but could you imagine the kangaroo now has you know graffiti can. yeah and then the bully He's just stuck on the other side. Well, the, yeah, the the thing breaks and he's on the other side, yeah. and Ryan's like, "Not today, man. Yeah, let's make like time. Let's and call nine one one. No, is, that's what he said, didn't he? Chucky did. Well, first, do you think we should call nine one one? Ryan just goes, "Yeah, absolutely," and they walk away. Narks. Narks. <laughs> yeah. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think this guy had like a bad situation with one of his kids and was like, I'm going to show what they, exactly what to do. So what do you think? How do you do you think it was real? No. 
So wait, he got transported back to the time before he fell in. Yeah. Okay. Makes the right decision. Yeah. Okay. St- legs still messed up, right? Yeah. And yeah. He becomes he, okay he, with it. But he goes home, and his mom was working late, right? So she came home to him sleeping. One of those. Things, yeah. So it never happened. It's well. I think it did because he he goes no because we got a sequel <laughs> so, yes. so he he goes over to the window sh- seal, cell uh-huh. in his room, and Ming gave him a jar. Remember? Yeah. What was in the jar? It was again? a cocoon. Okay? Oh yeah, because I wrote down a w- weird cocoon metaphor. Uh huh. Because at the time, I don't think Ryan thought it was real. We all have okay? cocoons, Ryan. We all have cocoons. Except Ryan. I wrote, we all have cocoons, Patrick, because Ming, I wanted to bring it up like that. Thank you, Ming. Thank you, Ming. I'm getting that tatted on my lower back. We all have cocoons, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, put yeah. Ryan on my back. I was like, who's Ryan? You just gotta Don't watch Warriors of Virtue. You've never seen Warriors of Virtue. <laughs> Two? Two. I know what next tattoo I'm getting. Okay, okay. So, so, but he opens up the cocoon bottle, right, and looks at the bottom, and it's like a note from Ming that said, "Spread your wings." Ryan. <laughs> so it did happen. No, it didn't. No, well, and then he looks at the sky and there's a shooting star and he like he like nods his head and smiles and turns to the dog and said, You want oh. me to tell you about the land of Tao? Yeah. And I'm like, this guy is gonna be in a mental institute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because did it happen or not? Let me hear it. It did, because we have a sequel in the like on the horizon. Well, if I didn't tell you the sequel part, did it happen? No. Okay, no. Yeah. He's just got to be okay with being adequate. But he got a fake concussion and then wakes up time traveled. I don't understand. There's no concussion. He just he just walked on that pipe and got scared. Well, the, let's say the easy and then walked back. Yeah. No, I mean, that he stopped right before he woke. Anyway, here's my point. <laughs> I'm getting a little frustrated because it would be so easy for him to like get dragged out by a friend, his friend Chucky or the bully whatever. And then had that dream because of his concussion or being unconscious. Yeah. But they just time traveled him. They just <laughs> dropped him off right before he makes the decision. Like, Can you imagine the press release audience just going, huh? <laughs> huh. Or could you imagine the writers being like, so how do we get him back there? How about we just put him there? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, it's going to look cool either way. But did it happen? <laughs> yeah. Yes, because there's a sequel. Yeah. We signed on for two. So he goes, yeah. So that's that's Warriors of Virtue. And gosh, we had so much fun watching this. Oh, man. And I, I, I think Patrick was getting a little anxious because there was so much time that I spent writing little comments. I can't wait to read some of them to you, you guys. There was a lot to write. Yeah. Let me um, tell you one of my notes while, yeah, you, while you look go, through yours. Go. How did people get there? Is it, it was the origin of the whirlpool, you know, or is it like they're multiple? They do say graffiti is the gateway drug, and you're telling me like all those people in the yeah land of Tao they were fell through that whirlpool. Yeah, Sharon, oh. Toby. Well, this is gonna definitely trigger some some sleep paralysis demons for me tonight. Oh my god, yeah. I wrote Tiny Tim Ryan Dollar General Brand Jonathan Taylor Thomas. I I also wrote down how many child actors turned down the role of Ryan. I'm so curious. That kid I, was pretty good though. He was fine. I will say that. I thought he did pretty good. And yeah. there were some spots like the fake crying. That's I mean, listen, the script was horrible. So oh, yeah. it's not like Horrendous. he had much to work with. But oh. he looks exactly like the kid from Halloween's Halloween, uh, not Halloween Town, um, Hocus, Hocus Pocus. Pocus. Oh, yeah, uh, um, did you think that? Oh, what's his name? Uh, Thackeray Binks. Zach, no, Zachary Binks was the cat. No, that's yeah. Um, no, Zachary Binks was oh, the cat. Right. So what's his name? <laughs> I've seen that. Okay, off that topic. Um, read another one. I'm looking up something. This pace was like breakneck pace, like crazy breakneck speed, faster than Ryan's. Neck whips, <laughs> yeah. his head whips. So, so many people. His bangs were just flapping <laughs> in the. <laughs> those bangs yeah. took Neck out. Bangs. Those bangs took out at least ten or eleven enemies on his football run. Like his Remember bangs, with the book? Oh, the yeah. The football run. <laughs> his you, bangs are the same like power as the kangaroo tails. <laughs> so Ryan really wanted to uh, play football, right? So they yeah. like kind of tease that along the way, and like you know he's running through the army. 
And I would love to just edit this. Yeah, he like it was like uh like the human highlight reel. Like it was like Deion Sanders in a backfield pump holding return. it. And I would love to edit this where like he's like, you know, thinking he's doing great, and then all of a sudden you just spin move. You see a spear just go through his chest. <laughs> <laughs> and then the credits roll, you know. <laughs> yeah, directed by a bike Um <laughs> very irresponsible giving this young boy the book of Tao. Yeah, or letting him into the kitchen. I mean, wait, wait, the manuscript the of Tao. Manuscript. Because the, the book of the Tao legend is, manuscript. He loses it. Right away, the manuscript, <laughs> yeah. and it's gone, and it's gone. Oh man! But I think it'd been so much easier just to make Ming like his, you know, dad's uncle or something. They don't explain it, right? They just no. get food there a lot. That was the only explanation. Did he even go with a dad, or was it his? No, mom? he's just chilling in the kitchen by himself. Yeah, so unclear. Just on one takeout run, he's like, "What's up, Ming?" He's waiting for his food, right? Yeah. Jeez, man. And this was the era of stranger danger. His mom was nowhere to be seen. I, it wasn't the era. Basically, kids were getting absolutely snatched in '97 and by kung fu chefs. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was there. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god. So I have uh, Brad's going to jail for reckless homicide. That that bully is the reason that kid is dead. I think may- maybe Ryan's just secretly been dead. I didn't think of that one. Yeah. Um. Jolly Rancher Sword. Yeah. Five equals one Kung and not, in parentheses, five. <laughs> His powers are gone. What a great ending. <laughs> there were moments I genuinely thought YouTube was rendering, but it was a choice. A storytelling device, if you will. <laughs> Tail whip fart, question mark. Yeah, yeah. Bad guy power source, question mark. Unclear. Very unclear. <laughs> <laughs> warriors come out and play <laughs> directly ripping the warriors that was a good one someone in that film set loved the warriors yeah. um wham 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 baby ryan thank <laughs> god Alicia was murdered yeah thank god she died shit happens which our tagline at the end of this episode because yeah. this is bonus footage for you fuckers uh i what what is the meaning of this episode and i said shit happens shit happens you'll see um Komodo, I am. He says something toward to Ryan. I represent everything you can become, and I put in quotes. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. All right, one or two more. Ryan is satisfied with being able to walk. Could have had. Could have been gifted kung fu powers though. Yeah. So. But true. he had to accept himself, right? He had to accept himself for who he was. Yeah. So Just sad. a mistake. Well. That's that's enough. I think yeah. I think we touched on some of the rest. The last thing. Yeah. Okay. So the last thing, and it's it's a little. This is it's like sounds like a word problem. I'm gonna be real quick. So the kangaroos go to get the book of Tao, and they get captured. When they get captured, all of the little even evil henchmen and Elysia and Komodo all come running in, and they're going, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, are they going to tickle the fuck out of these kangaroos right now? Just a, a wild journey, Booty. Can you give me your thoughts and feelings, and then give me a score for this one? There is a pure nostalgia rush in seeing something like this like from the 90s because, like you said, there was a budget, you guys. They put in $30 million. During- well, 56 Fifty-six million dollars in nineteen ninety-seven. That is insane. Yeah. Like I don't think a Lamborghini Countach was more than a million. <laughs> so like for that much money in the nineties to make what we just saw, wild. Um, Give me a score. A, a score. I I had a fun time. A, a fun score. I cannot deny it. A fun score. How about that? I'll it, give it a six point seven. Okay. Okay. Because, like, yes, to answer your question, yes, I would recommend that you watch this movie. It is a fun revisit, almost tw- twenty six years later. Yeah. Okay. Highly recommend. Little little six point seven action. Okay. Yeah, let's hear yours. I think for enjoyment slash fun score. Yeah. I gotta go with an eight point ten. Oh my. Wait. Eight point ten. Oh. Oh <laughs> me. Oh me. Little, oh my. Eight point two out of ten. Uh-huh. For enjoyment levels, right? Yeah. As a movie, you know, maybe I would give it like a, a three out of ten, right? Oh yeah, but no one. This isn't up for an Oscar. But that, that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I loved it. Yeah, we had a good time with this one. We did. Okay, so we are probably gonna pick. I, I kind of like this this theme of like Booty's gonna pick something next, where something yeah. from his childhood, something that really brings back some good nostalgic memories. And we're going to try to get one of these out uh, every other week or weekly. 
we will see how it goes. But thank you for coming on this journey with us. Booty, any final thoughts? Uh, shit happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, what is it, PG-13 or is this PG? PG. Okay, because you PG. only get one or two shits in a movie, and yeah, that guy took them both. <laughs> he did. <laughs> well, the director took one, and there's the other. Man. All right. Booty? I had a blast, Patrick. Did you? Yeah. I'm good. I thought you were going to hate this. No, I love it. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, my God. All right, Booty. Hey, let's make like Tom and Cruz. And Cruz. <laughs>